Major League Pickleball stop number two for the 2023 season here at Pictona, Holly Hill. I'm Chad Edwards, joining me in the booth this morning, Pickleball superstar Lee Waters. Oh, that's very kind, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping in the commentary booth after well during the recovery how's the how's the knee going yeah so um i'm having surgery april 5th so i put it off as long as possible um and at least taking the month of of april off so it's a good time to go under the knife and have a have a solid month to recover there we go well yeah. best of luck with that one thank you so here on grandstand court we have the arizona drive taking on the dallas pickleball club and there's been a few changes for both teams in this one. We'll start with the Arizona Drive. Yeah. Sarah Ansbury, Heather Nobler, a new pickup with the shuffle draft. Sarah Burr getting dropped and, and Heather picking up. Yeah, and Heather's there. actually from our area. Uh, she lives, I think, in Boca Raton. Um, so she's in our practice group a lot, and, and she's really made a lot of improvements. I think she's an ex-college tennis player coming from, I believe, Oklahoma. I think I think. Yeah, I think she was one. a standout college tennis player, so obviously has a lot of talent um, and been working hard, you know, for this upcoming MLP season. And then on the for the men's side, Wesley Burrow's back, and we're seeing a substitution here with this one with Pesa Tioni, Andre Silstrom out with a little bit of a back injury, so... Yo, we're definitely going to see with the Challenger Series here a lot of changes in that shuffle draft. Obviously, with the Premier Series, we're set for three. Right, exactly. It's a lot different here in the Challenger. And I'm excited to see Pessa because I know I'm pretty sure that Wes and Andreas went undefeated. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if Pessa can, you know, step up and, and you hey, know, hold those wins. Pessa literally has some big shoes to fill. <laughs> with Andre Silstrom being up. I think he's like size 16 or something <laughs> ridiculous like that. But on the Dallas Pickleball Club side, a couple of changes here as well. Most yeah. notably, Julian Braverman joining the club yeah. with a, a trade with Megan Fudge going over to Columbus. Uh, Krista Gachiva is back. Yep. And then on the men's side, Brandon French is back. And then Daniel De La Rosa is a pickup for Chuck Taylor. Wow, Daniel being number one racquetball player, that guy's fast, athletic, he hits it hard. That was a good pickup for them, I think. Yeah, and Della Rosa has experience with Major League Pickleball. So we're gonna get started here with women's doubles. Just as a reminder, Major League Pickleball is rally scoring. Once a team gets to 20, it's a freeze. And then the other team will continue with rally scoring until they get to 18 and then we're a double freeze and then it's regular side out scoring from then on. It's pretty amazing how many matches end up in that double freeze too. Oh, That's I what know. makes it so exciting in MLP. The atmosphere is, is definitely hard to match here with MLP. <coughs> so we've got head referee Ron Ponder. Just making sure everybody's set here. This early morning court's gonna be a little tricky with, with the shade. We got half the court in the shade, half the court in the sun. So I'm gonna put you on the spot here, Lee. Predictions for this one, or, or what? Are, what? Are, we'll start with Arizona. What? Are, what? Are, what do they have to do to to put the pressure here? Because women's doubles point is is so big in in MLP. Yeah, I think I think right now, you know, Sarah brings a lot of experience to the court, a lot of consistency. Krista is a fairly new player, and Jill hasn't played professionally for a year. For a year. She's, so she's making her comeback. Yeah. yeah. I think if uh, Sarah and Heather can put a lot of balls in the court, just put a lot of pressure from a consistency standpoint, I think they come away with this one. All right. So getting set here. Heather Noble is up. Just a little short, trying to still feel things out here early on. So much pressure in MLP, you just feel at every point. So that's the going opposite. against everything of what you just said, right? And I'm so surprised because I'm not used to we, Sarah We don't see Sarah do that. Yeah. <laughs> So 
So quick pull of the trigger there from Heather Nobler, but not able to bring it down the back of the court. Yeah, and Jill's definitely going to bring a lot of fire. There's going to be a lot of screaming. Um, Oh, what a point there from the Dallas Pickleball Club. Defense on show. Yeah, I think Jill's going to thrive with this atmosphere. She just she just loves the fire, and, and she really can bring it. So they, 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 <laughs> they've gotten an early start here, and, and you can just see the emotion on the side of the court. Yeah, quick, fired up. quick 5 0 run here for Dallas Pickleball Club. Oh, <laughs> so even if it wasn't out, she was in the kitchen anyway, but Jill getting a little twisted up with the feet on that one. That uh, puts Arizona on the board. Ansbury serving at 1-5. I think this is, where, this is where Sarah and Heather just need to settle in, like I said earlier, and just make a lot of balls, be consistent. Good ball there from Gachiva getting it to the feet of Ansbury in the transition. So do you think MLP makes some plays be a little bit more aggressive because every point? See, when, when I think about rally scoring, and I'll wait till the end of this point, I think about people playing more defensively, right? But it seems like this atmosphere um, does make some people like thrive on the emotion and become more aggressive. Yeah, that's what I've noticed as well. Oh. Which I think is what everybody wants to see. You know, they want to they want to see they want to see people ripping the ball, speeding up, getting in those hands battles. Yeah, good counterattack there from Ansbury. Gachiva trying to slide it down the line. Yeah, I think Yo, it's hard not to feed off of the energy of MLP. And then we see Ansbury getting fired up. I mean, I've never seen Sarah fired up like I, this, this, It's MLP, baby. Th it's a different Sarah Ansbury than what we would see in a regular tournament, right? She wants it. A oh, couple of errors creeping in here. Arizona Drive closing the distance, 5-7. Oh, nice hands. Raverman's going to give a little bit of come on back there as well, trying to fire herself back up. So what do you think about the new, we haven't talked about it. We haven't talked about it a lot the yet. New, the <laughs> new, it's just making me think about it because we're starting to see the emotion. We're starting to see the come ons, the stare downs, you know, the things that MLP is known for. Now we have a soccer influenced card system. Uh oh. Whoa. All right. So now, <laughs> now we've got, as we were actually talking about it. Right? Good job, Lee. Yes. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> So, so now what we've got in the middle of that point there, uh, one, th <laughs> one thing with MLP, right, is a discussion of hindrance. Mm -hmm. Because everybody gets so fired up and you get noise coming from the crowd. So what Jill Braverman was calling right there is as Ansbury angled that ball out toward the fence, she yelled, come on. Braverman got it back, but then she called hindrance in the, in the middle of the point. Yes. Yeah, that could be a momentum swing too when something like that happens. Nobler just trying to go a little too big with that one, missing in the top of the net. Oh, 
And a little love from the net and a big come on there from Sarah Ansbury. I feel like there's something we don't know about, like <laughs> in the background of this one. <laughs> we know. may have to talk about that one off air. <laughs> Ball just deep. Excellent job there from Nobla. Good. Fighting off Good some hands. hard balls. Yeah. And that's what I've seen a lot from, from Heather. You know, I, I don't know her game really well, but um, I think she's very consistent. She's really good at countering. She's going to make you work for the point. That's it. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say that's exactly what she did right there, you know. Um, just getting a lot of balls back and countering, placing the ball very well. Yeah, I think we're, we're seeing the strategy now as, as far as Nobla's the one that's being targeted a lot. Mm -hmm. That ball just out. So, yeah, Nobla's being targeted, and she's got to do what you were just talking about, of making a lot of balls. But we're seeing Sarah Ansbury much more aggressive. Mm -hmm. She's putting pressure in the middle of the court. She's moving a lot more than what we've seen before. Absolutely, absolutely. An interesting thing just happened there as well. Jill was questioning the ball. Uh, new rule, MLP, players can no longer ask the refs if the ball was in or out. So that's got to be weird on both ends. They're just the going to ask everybody the in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you ask? Did anybody see it? Was it out? <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, smart. Very smart. Good ball from Braverman. Recognizing that Noble is stuck there at the baseline, just drops it in. So we're going to change the ends here with Dallas Pickleball Club up 11-9. Anything can happen at this point, anything. So continuation of, of what you were talking about as far as the, the soccer style mm -hmm. new rule. Continue on with, <laughs> with, with that one. I think we're like mid, mid description right there. Yeah, so, you know, last MLP, we saw probably more emotion than ever. A lot. And A coming lot. from the players, saying maybe some things that they shouldn't. Uh, coaches, you know, I team, was fired team up. Team owners. Team owners yelling out, uh, you know, some interesting banter, <laughs> questionable banter. <laughs> um, and so MLP decided, like, hey, we want the fire. We want the friendly banter, you know, the finger wags, the chest pumping. But we don't want profanity. Yes. <laughs> we don't want heckling coming we, from the we, owners. We don't want comments <laughs> directed solely yeah, at somebody. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, so, so they came up with, I think there's a new, like, competition committee. So they came up with this soccer-style blue card, orange card, I believe. Yep. And um, blue card being, like, the warning, and then orange card being... Is it a point? Is it's it a you're kicked out? You're, no, it's it's a it's it's a it's a point. So good shot there from Gachiva getting that down the feet of Ansbury. Sorry if we're talking over points, but there's so much to discuss. Oh, you just can't even imagine. Nice speed up from Heather, right down the middle, low at Krista's uh, left foot there. Perfect placement. Yeah, so we saw the adjustment. We, she sped up a couple and left them a little high. Mm -hmm. She flattened that one out a little bit more. Yeah. Gee, that one's questionable. Yeah. Yeah, I think she was looking to surprise Krista there, but <laughs> Krista was loaded up, ready to go. Yeah, it looked like that ball just checked up a little bit, threw the timing off for Ansbury. Achieving not able to pick that one up. So AZ drive 11 13. Yeah. 
Good spot there from Braverman. I mean, really for both teams, those middle balls have been so effective. I mean, you're, you're playing with somebody you're not used to playing. The middle's always difficult in that sense, and both teams are doing a pretty good job of finding the middle. That ball's just wide. You know, one of the things that you just mentioned there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ansbury just giving a little chirp into the into the commentary booth right here. But one of the things that you just pointed out is, you know, especially with all the the movement uh, between stop one and stop two. Yes. Yo, know, the this is two teams that. They have not had a whole lot of play together. Never. No, I think, you know, they probably had the uh, the warm-up practice day yesterday. Uh, I know Sarah and Heather were out here most of the day trying to work out kinks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's nothing like being in a true match. Yeah. Good Chiva catching the net cord, landing in. Yeah, that's one I would have liked to have seen Heather go right back to that to that middle, that left side of Krista where she was so successful before instead of, right to her forehand. <clears throat> so it's been a couple of times that Braverman's got caught in that transition. Do you think she's just trying to put a little too much pressure on, move up to that kitchen too quickly? Yeah, like she, I don't see any type of split step when the other player is getting ready to hit the ball. She's sort of just crashing um, and then her timing's been off. I think, I think that comes, though, from not, not playing a professional match for a year. Oh, absolutely. You know, your, your, your emotions are running high. You're trying to get to the net. and. I mean, I, I didn't hit a pickleball for a month, and I went and hit some balls with Simone the other day. I couldn't get a ball over the net. <laughs> so, so being at, at this fast pace after, not, after a year off, There she goes. She's got a hold of that one. So that's going to bring up the question with you, with with all your time off. It's gonna, t it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna take some while to get the, uh, you know, the, the reactions back. Well, and I was everything. gonna say the main thing that I'm worried about is, you know, the hands. The beat. hands, yeah. That, that's, and I even thought, you know, when I turned 40, I was like, that's the thing I noticed the most. I wasn't gonna bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> we're both in our 40s. Yeah. You know, the, the, the brain says yes, mm -hmm. the body says yeah, I'm a little bit slow. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And the game's just getting faster. Yeah, yep. So, so absolutely. But Jill's hand speed seems pretty good. Seems like, seems like she retained her hand speed. She's been winning a lot of these uh, banging rallies. Oh, nice wide ball there from Gachiva. Looked like just caught the line. Nobly not able to put that lob up and over. You know, one thing we didn't talk about is Krista also lives in Delray Beach. So I have a feeling these two probably practice together or at least know each other's game pretty well, I would think. Oh, that ball just slid through the court. Braveman, not sure how she didn't pick that one up. Nice deep overhead there from Ansbury and a shout back at the direction of Jill Braverman. <laughs> yeah, very Great. good. Speed up yeah. there from Nobla. Yeah, that was great point construction overall. Coach of AZ Drive, Morgan Evans over here cheering his team on. He knows a thing or two about pickleball. I think so. Going against fellow commentator, <laughs> Dave Fleming over there, coach of Dallas Pickleball Club. Ooh. 
I like the step in there. Maybe rushed it just a little too much, but you, you know, they were back within one. Dallas goes back up by two, 19-17, but. Yeah, I agree. That was the right shot. She just overplayed it a bit. Oh, bad luck. Excellent ball there for Gachiva to speed up. Just a little unlucky catching the net cord and sailing deep. So that puts the AZ drive back within one, 18-19. Beautiful. Man, she held that so well. As Lee pointed out right there, Gachiva just holding the paddle, being able to find the hole. We're going to take a timeout here from AZ Drive. But yeah, Gachiva just holding that paddle out there. She had options, right? She's, she's sitting and reading to see what Ansbury and Noble were going to do when that hole opened up in the middle. Yeah. And the middle was a perfect place to go, like we've talked about before, especially with new teams. Just shoot it right up the middle. So, w they've so they're at 20? We're at a freeze here. Dallas Pickleball Club's at 20, AZ Drive at 18. So, side out scoring here for the remainder of this one. <laughs> That's what we talked about, how often we reach that double freeze scenario. <laughs> here we are in first match of MLP, and uh, we're at the double freeze. So, one of the changes between MLP Mesa and here MLP Daytona is obviously the points totals in Mesa when a team got to 3-0 the match was stopped they've now changed that we had a couple of issues uh, as far as overall games being one of the factors of moving teams through and yeah if you don't finish out that match somebody's losing out on a game Good pressure there from Ansbury. Gachiva leaving that ball up just a little too high. Sarah firing up the crowd. It's fun to see Sarah having so much fun out here. I mean, she's been around for a long time. She's seen this game change and all these years later to be out here at MLP and enjoying herself so much. It's fun to watch. So big pick up there. Ansbury was going to serve and then they realized that they were frozen. Oh, that ball's just wide from Nobla. Good ball from Gachiva getting that one down to Nobla's feet. So another match point here? Another game point here for Dallas Pickleball Club. Oh. oh. A little stare down, a little stare down. <laughs> Braverman <laughs> not even looking to see if that ball went out. Just threw up the let's go. So Dallas Pickleball Club taking the women's doubles point 21-18. It's a great match, though. Oh, it, was a, it was a fantastic match and, and kind of just culminates everything that we see with MLP. You talked about it early on, how many times we get to that 2018 freeze. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it's, it's more so the, the energy. I mean, we talked about Ansbury coming out, and that's not her typical not play style, right? Where she, she's coming out. She's the aggressor. Usually she's that solid defensive player that's going to stay in points a long time. But that's like kind of what you were saying, how you, how you find this atmosphere. People are playing more aggressively. And that was a perfect example. <laughs> it, it, you it couldn't led, have planned it any better. It led straight into it. I mean, let's <laughs> let's let's just say most of what we've been saying has happened so far. So, uh, we're going to have the men's doubles matchup coming here next with West Burrows and Pesationi for the AZ Drive, and Daniel De La Rosa and Brandon French for Dallas Pickleball Club. We are going to mute our mics here for just a little bit while these guys warm up, and we'll be right back. Nobody likes playing with or against your back. Oh, please. <laughs> 
So in, in, in APP, they're playing Don't hit it too hard, Daniel. <laughs> What's up, Brandon? I am. <laughs> For sure. What do you mean? You muted it in the middle of that, right? Yeah, you have been muted. Okay. Because I just realized I turned the dial the wrong way. Oh, God. All right, so back here, <laughs> men's doubles. Just realized we didn't turn our mics off between matches there. That so was fun. All right, so again, we're in a situation where we have uh, two new teams never having played together. Good ball there from De, De La Rosa. Yeah, I think it's going to be the common trend that we're going to see with the Challenger Series. Ooh. 
And we discussed during the break there, Lee, with kind of all four of these guys, a, a little flashy, a little aggressive yeah. uh, at times. Brandon's just so tricky. You, you really don't know what's coming off his paddle. He's really tough to play. I've played rec games with him before and I'm like, just lost. Yeah, good spot and good speed up there from Burrows. And we see the first, first finger wag coming from Tioni right there. Putting the AZ drive on the board. Pessa and Daniel, both from Phoenix. Pretty sure they practice a lot together. I'm sure they both want to come away with the win here. Tioni flattened out on that drop. Feet kind of moved through it. They've got Brandon French, who's, like I said, super tricky. And then you've got Pessa, who's lefty. That always throws a little wrench in your game plan. <laughs> Dang lefties. I always wish I was a lefty <laughs> growing up. <laughs> I still have to remind people, like, Annalie, you do realize your opponent's lefty. Oh, yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's, of course, and you sometimes just, it's like, just oh. <laughs> You, you literally forget, you, and by the tenth time, you're like, "Ah, oh, yeah, left hand." That's right. They're four hands in the middle. Darn it! A good ball there from French. Getting that one back behind Tioni. Daniel playing with the black ace. He's already known for his power, and that's a pretty powerful paddle. So. I think it's hard to say that there's no paddles on the market that don't have power and spin nowadays. Yeah. You know, it used to, you talk about a, a power paddle or a control paddle. Now it's kind of like the, the power is going to the extremes and then it's how much spin is, right, is the paddle right. generating right. rather than a control side. French going with the big backhand tomahawk and just slapping De La Rosa's forehand out of the way. Luckily his paddle didn't fly into the kitchen. Oh, nice it's move. such a good ball from Tioni there. Sells it with the body and then an inside out forehand aggressive ball out wide. Yeah, and Wes, Wes read that so well. He was over there for the Ernie. Uh, perfect play by the Arizona drive. <laughs> Sorry. <I'm, laughs> French is pushing. <laughs> Tell her else it turns around and smiles at us as well because he's laughing at the same thing. Della Rosa has probably got one of the, the most powerful <laughs> four, hands, <laughs> of the four game. hands in the game. And French is pushing him out of the way. <laughs> Which is hysterical because rarely do you see the right side player pushing the left side player. You do <laughs> see the other way around, but there he goes. So the, the <laughs> trickiness with French is how much wrist he uses, right? And you see three, <laughs> three different formations of that wrist power in that, that point. But That's he, what makes him so tricky. Yeah, you, you, he sits with that wrist already cocked. Yep. So then it's like, are you going to roll it? Are you going to flatten it out? Or then he comes across with that that backhand tomahawk there. So it's tough. 
It's tough because a lot of <laughs> a lot of what you're doing, right, is you're trying to read the paddle. You you're trying to read those exactly. tendencies and, and anticipation is so key. And when somebody's like you just said, three different shots with three <laughs> different paddle angles and different sides, it's really hard to do that. So Dallas Pickleball Club jumping out to a five point lead here at the end change, up eleven six. So it's typically something that we don't see, right, with the referee asking a play if they're in the position that they want to be. Because obviously with, with MLP, you yep, are right. stuck on one side or you're on the side that you choose. But at end changes and timeouts, you can switch sides of Which the court. Which honestly you don't see that many teams taking advantage of that. I think there should kind of be more of that. It'd make it more fun, too. Um, I know our team, uh, I'm coaching the Fives in the Premier League, and uh, James Ignatowicz took uh, the opportunity to switch, times, uh, switch sides a couple a times. A couple yeah. of times. De La Rosa floating that one out deep, just a little too aggressive on that speed up. Ooh. Nice angle. Fence got in the way. I think West would have had that otherwise. Perfect angle there from French. Big overhead from Delarosa, but straight through the court, Tony got it back. So if you actually take a look at how French holds the paddle, <laughs> he's got the butt of the paddle in the middle of his palm. So that allows him to do so much with the wrist. Yes, absolutely. It can get you in trouble, but that's pretty much his game is yeah. his wrist. Yep. So, um, so yeah, that's he's taking advantage of, of definitely the way that he holds up. It's hard to read as well. Like it's hard to read on his forehand if he's going to dink or speed that ball up. Well, even his ready <laughs> position. I'm watching. I'm watching him there at the kitchen line. You know, we typically, what we see with most players when we're instructing or whatever, it's like at least to have, it doesn't matter height of the paddle as much, but at least have the paddle head above your wrist. Yeah. He's standing there with it basically pointing down to the ground. Him and J.W. Johnson. Yeah. I, you know, if I, uh, if I were Arizona right now, not, I would be hitting more balls to Daniel. Not because Daniel's not a terrific player. He is. But you can... <laughs> you at least understand what's going on a little bit better. Well, there you have it. Tioni goes at De La Rosa a couple of times right there. It's also, you know, French is kind of, he's on a roll right now. He's, he's feeding into everything. He's the perfect MLP player that we talked about that just feeds on this atmosphere. Yep. Plays aggressive, comes out shooting. Brandon French, very animated right there. Burrows missing that drive just a little deep. So the lead's out to seven now for the Dallas Pickleball Club. And that's good. They, they got him moving on that point. Brought him out wide, brought him back to the middle. That's the key right there, right, is moving players around. For a lot of the amateurs, they try to just hit through people or, or play catch with people. Yeah, and there, there you go. I, I really, I mean, he Brandon's just, he's hot. He's on fire. He's feeding on this atmosphere. Let's put a few more balls in De La Rosa's court. An excellent job by Tioni there with the counterattacks. Brandon reaching, <laughs> continuing to push Daniel off the court. A little ambitious there, but. Timeout. Well, Dallas Pickleball Club is going to take a timeout here at 17-13. They're making a little run here. AZ Drive getting a couple points back, closing that gap to four. But that ball that we just saw there from French, 
if you're a wristy player and you're somewhat of an aggressive player, those are the balls that you're going to, to push the envelope with, right? You're, you're going to take those risks, and at times they're very good calculated risks, and sometimes they're ambitious. But the, the deception from French, I think, has been the difference yeah. in this one. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, De, De La Rosa is playing consistent. He's playing steady. We have seen him get attacked a couple of times or, or even when he started the firefight mm -hmm. trying to go too big. And he's made a couple of errors, but, but French uh, has, has, I think, been the, the, the X factor so far for the Dallas Pickleball Club. Yeah, I know, I know whenever I play someone who's a little unorthodox or hard to read or, you know, very tricky, I find myself playing to the other player, even if the other players maybe, you know, considered the higher ranked player, just because I know more what's going to come off the paddle and what, you know, how a point's going to be constructed. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to play Brandon French, no. Great speed up by Wes. Perfect spot there from Burrows, right into the chest of French. Wasn't able to flip that paddle over fast enough, and that's one of the downsides of his game style. Ah. Tell you, just a little delicate with that drop. I feel like in rally scoring, the third is maybe like the most important shot. Like you just don't want to miss it, give away those free points. Yeah, good counter attack there from Tony. Both feet off the ground, getting on top of that one. If he doesn't get up on top of that, that ball sails out deep. So excellent job there. Nice deep serve. Z drive sneaking back in within two now, 16, 18. I do feel like they've adjusted their strategy a little bit. Uh, well, as I say that. Oh, what, what a, a read. Get. And another. Oh, just wide. Great defense. Teoni and Barros all over the court on that one. We see that ball from Burrows just going wide. Great drive. That's kind of what Daniel's known for, those powerful low drives. Perfect example of it right there. Ooh. So Dallas Pickleball Club closing it out. 21-16 on a good finish there from De La Rosa. I'm going to be interested in seeing Brandon French play mixed doubles. So I got the chance to, to watch him in Mesa. Okay. In, in mixed. and Does he play the right? He No, he plays he, the left. He does play the left. Okay. He plays the left. So it kind of takes, takes out that funkiness of the backhand yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how, how these two mixed doubles matchups are going to go. I would probably say we'll see French and Gachiva. Okay. Because Braverman's a little bit more um, of an aggressive right side player. So then when you've, when you've got French that's, that's coming in hot right now mm -hmm. and he was all over the court, mm -hmm. we may get some, some mix-ups in the middle. So I'll probably say De La Rosa and, and Braverman... French and Gachiva, but I could be wrong. I probably will be you know, wrong. I, I would like to see Brandon play the right almost in mixed, just because he's so good, as we just saw, of coming in the middle with that backhand and then really attacking the girl. Yeah, that is true. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'd like to see it. Instead of the traditional, you know, put the guy on the left, I'm, I, I'd be interested to see Brandon on the right there. But um, it was one of the things, again, James Ignatowicz did when he was switching sides with the fives, he'd switch and mixed. Yeah. Get on the right and take his backhand and in the take middle, it, the big right to the girl. I remember asking James at MLP Newport last year. I said, 
which is your better side, mm-hmm. forehand or backhand? He's mm-hmm. like, doesn't matter. I'm just as good <laughs> so on like, either yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that's that's James Ignatowicz for you he's kind of like I'm good either way with a big smile on his face yeah y- so you can't ever tell if that guy's being serious or not <laughs> oh well I was completely wrong there we go Della Rosa and Gachiva out on the court right, right now warming up we've got Ansberry and Tioni for the AZ drive we're going to make sure we turn our microphones off this time and we're going to take a little break All right, we're back here at MLP Daytona Beach for our first mixed doubles matchup here between Dallas Pickleball Club and AZ Drive. Pace to Tioni to serve for the AZ Drive. Oh, De La Rosa wants that one back. Kind of a fun setup with Pessa being lefty. We've got guy in front of guy and gal in front of gal. Pretty unusual in mixed doubles. Good counterattack there from Gachiva off the Ansbury sp- speed up. Setting up Della Rosa for the finish. Oh, that is a tough spot there for Tioni. Yeah, I'm wondering if we're going to see a lot of. Um speed ups amongst the ladies here being straight across from each other looking to attack early usually the ladies are cross court so it's harder to attack cross court but 
when you're right ahead, that speed up's there. There was another speed up. So we've had Sarah speed up twice so far, but Krista's been on both of them. Yeah, and the good thing from Gachiva there, she's taken that step to the right, clearing the backhand. A little I fade. I think if she if she steps left on that one, Ansbury's got her. So good job from Gachiva. Good pressure there from Della Rosa. <laughs> so early run here. What's the score? <laughs> Dallas Pickleball Club up 5-2. So we actually do not have monitors in front of us. We do not have a view of the scoreboard. So if we <laughs> have delays or questions like that from Lee, we've got to quickly check over behind us. No, I knew they had gone on a run, but like you just said, I didn't know the exact score. <laughs> and typically we have our referees mic'd up as well, but we can't even hear referee Ron Ponder. <laughs> Achieva getting stuck on the back foot there a little bit. Wasn't quite able to get underneath that drive. So AZ drive, serving at 4-6. Uh, Just the power from Della Rosa with that backhand flick right there. Yep. Yeah, those racquetball players have a wicked wrist. Daniel being the best at the moment. Good spot there from Gachiva, recognizing that Ansbury looking for that Ernie attempt. Throws the lob up and over. Taoni not over to come over and cover. It's giving Dallas Pickleball Club an 8-4 lead. Yeah, I just feel like uh, they're anticipating so well. Like they're actually reading the other team before the team <laughs> hits the ball, which in pickleball, if you can do that. You're a step up. You're a step up. Yeah, better job there from town. He's stepping over, being an aggressive. Yeah, putting De a little more pressure. Yeah, Absolutely. I was going to say, Della, Della Rosa has been putting the pressure on in the middle for DPC, so good for Tione putting that pressure on. Big backhand there from Gachiva. Hard reach in there from Della Rosa off of that <laughs> pop up. Six ten. Wow. Come on, really? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so Dallas Pickleball Club. Up 11-6 here at the end change. I have to say, I've been pretty impressed with the partnership of Della Rosa and, and Gachiva. Similar to what you were talking about, they're, they're meshing very well. Very they're, well. They're understanding the movement. Gachiva's doing a good job of sliding to the right, not only giving Della Rosa the, the room, mm -hmm. but when she is attacked, it allows her to counterattack. If we're talking about the AZ drive, mm -hmm. What is something that they have to look at to try to change things up? Yeah, it's tough. They, like we were just saying, Dallas seems to have a lot of chemistry. They seem like they're a little bit uncomfortable, like very new partnership. They've had some middle balls where that they're both going for. But I think, like you said earlier, like Tioni needs to figure out how to put a little bit more pressure. Um, I, I would even try maybe a speed up, speed up cross court um, at, at Krista. Just, just try to like, make them uncomfortable yeah you know he's got that forehand in the middle i feel like maybe he could take one of those balls and try to do something with it good balls there from ansbury God, 
I don't know. You know, I know it's it's <laughs> wicked. One thing that um, Dallas is doing really well is both of them on their returns. They're hitting these slice returns. And they're staying really low. They're staying low and just not giving um, Arizona much, you know, much to work with. Achieva, a little unlucky there, catching that one off the net court. Do you think with Ansbury and Tioni that, you know, is, there's kind of like a respect thing between Tioni as, as far as wanting to give Ansbury more room? Potentially, potentially, absolutely. Um, I know that that happens with Annalise sometimes when she plays next with Unfamiliar. They, they respect her, and, and she's like, no, come take my balls. Yeah, yeah. Like, no. Don't respect me. <laughs> Take my ball. <laughs> so, so there could be some of that going on for sure. He knows. He knows that Sarah's seasoned um, and a great player, and giving her room. But now's the time he needs to. He needs to really put pressure. When I play mixed doubles, if the guy's not moving, I love it because I just, I just don't feel pressure. I feel like I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Okay, all right. So even right there, I'd like Tioni to come over a little bit more. Ansbury was pulled all the way over, left foot kind of outside mm -hmm. of the court. Mm -hmm. Pace is still left foot, middle line. Yeah, Sarah does like to, when she's playing the left, like hit that sort of inside out forehand dink. So that would allow Pace to really move over and get in the middle. And he's super quick. So if they go behind him, he can get there. All right, here we go. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Hey. Better, better ball p placement, better ball positioning there from Ansbury and, and Tioni with the finish. 12-13. Tightened it up. Got to love rally scoring. And there we've got it. All squared now at 13s. What a run. Big run here for the AZ drive. Going to take a timeout from Dallas Pickleball Club. There's so not a little, lot of wind today, but I don't know if there's a visibility, like if, if there's a side difference since we saw such a run in the beginning and now we're seeing a flip-flop. I don't know. Yeah, I was just looking at that myself. We've got the sun starting to creep over behind the court. We're getting rid of those shadows. You know, we do sort of have a sloped court here. One side's kind of hitting uphill. <laughs> oh, is that <laughs> what it is? One side's hitting downhill. <laughs> we noticed it during the PPA. Um, that I sort of, if you're on, if yeah, you're hitting yeah, downhill, yeah, yeah, yeah. you do sort of have an advantage. Yeah, you can, you or can, like you, you feel can like see you it do, a little bit. I think, I don't know if it's an optical illusion or if it, it or, is. or if it actually is. No, no. In fact, um, a local during the PPA came up to me. She's like, I just want to give you a heads up. These courts are sloped. She's like, so you really got to be careful. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you're right. And then Annalie and I warmed up on this very court um, for PPA, and it was true. Yeah. So their they're grading is off just a little bit is what you're saying. Yes. And I don't know why that is. I think the second, second to last ball there from Ansbury, she tried to be a little too aggressive with it rather than that reset, and it just put her in that awkward position. Yeah, and they, and they were hitting all the balls to, like, Daniel's backhand, which is so wicked. Oh, good step over move. there yes, from Tioni. That was a great move. That was what you were talking about, Sarah shifting off the court, Tioni coming over and taking over that middle. All tied up at 14s. And a free point there from the missed return right. Gechiva, so tough to miss the returns in MLP with the rally scoring. Yeah, and Arizona really needs this match to stay, mm. to stay in it. They're down 2-0, so overall. So they really need both of these mixed matches to get to the dream breaker. So Gechiva, certainly the target for the AZ drive right now. 
Taking De La Rosa out of the equation a little bit. As oh, I say, wow. that Teoni. Got to have a little luck. Gets love from the net cord. <laughs> I'm looking over to the crowd, and we have some, some PESA large head cutouts. <laughs> oh, I see them there, too, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think Sarah just lost that one. Good take. Ooh. Ooh. I think that was almost questionable here as well. About yeah, if Sarah with, walked through the kitchen. Yeah, but yeah. It, she she was she was behind the kitchen there. Yeah, good moves there from Tony. So Definitely. I think they listened to us. AZ. <laughs> AZ drive making that adjustment of Taoni coming over, taking more middle, putting a lot of pressure on. Coach Morgan Evans over there with a big smile on his face. <laughs> AZ drive up 18 16. So big turn of events. Yeah, that loopy return, that loopy, slicey return, it just doesn't, it gives you no pace, it bounces away from and you just, when it lands. And it just sits in front. Yep, it's a great return. <laughs> French, French asking if they had three timeouts. <laughs> no. I would have stuck with Krista's maybe left foot there. Dig, yeah, and I, th middle. I think that's a ball, too, where it, it got just a little too deep yep. on Ansbury and then trying to push that, that cross court. Nothing she could do but try to lift it up. It's just hard with De La Rosa's backhand being danger zone. Oh, no. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? So a little miscommunication there on that ball in the middle between Tony and Ansbury. The De La Rosa drive. Dallas Pickleball Club now back up 19-18. We got a timeout here by AZ Drive. Good timeout. De La sure. Rosa's kind of been able to insert himself back into the middle of the court these last couple of points. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, when he shifts over into the middle... Man, it, it makes you want to hit to that backhand, but but like, his backhand's so strong. If it's just a little high, you're dead in the water. So, so he's almost like just baiting he's you. Baiting, yeah. Nice drive. Oh yeah, good spot there from Ansbury. So made the adjustment there on the previous Ernie where she kind of went across the court a little bit more, gave mm -hmm. De La Rosa time. Mm -hmm. This one going straight at the feet. All square at 19s. Yeah, that's a very good shot there from Gachiva. Recognizing Taoni was going to come across. So it takes it back behind Ansbury. Game point. Match clincher. What oh, a drive. Big Holy drive cow. from De La Rosa. Ice in the veins. So the AZ <sighs> drive, we're able to put a little bit of pressure on here. Getting ahead, but Dallas Pickleball Club proving just too strong. So obviously they've clinched this one at 3-0. Yes. The change from Mesa to here is in Mesa. It would have been done. Mm -hmm. Now we're with Daytona. We're still going to see our... Second mixed doubles matchup. Yeah, and I this think that's point, a good change. Yeah, good and change. Th this point is is just as important as the other ones because you know AZ Drive maybe they're they're off just a little bit this morning. They make a, a run over the next two days. Yeah, I believe they're playing three matches today, which is crazy. Yes, that's a lot. Yes, it it is. Uh, it is for the for the challenge series. Two. Right? Yes. They didn't play three in. I no, don't no, think no. they played three to three in one. I'm going. Day. I'm going to pull up our schedule right now. Let's 
So yeah, like you said, this point is big. Yeah, so three, three today for each of our Challenger Series teams. Over on Championship Court right now, we've got Bay Area taking on Orlando. I wonder what the score of that one is. Bay Area taking the title in Mesa in the Challenger League. And then at 9 a.m., we just started with Chicago and Utah over on court three and D.C. and Miami on court four. So, long day. A lot of pickleball. We'll wrap up probably around 6 p.m. tonight. So, 10 hours worth of, of pickleball. And then, obviously, tomorrow, a long day with... The Premier Series starting. Yep. And the quarters and semis of the Challenger Series. So it's a kind of a 12-hour a day tomorrow from it, 9 to 9. <laughs> it, it is so interesting to see, like, like you were saying, how, like, different players thrive in this atmosphere. Like, you know, maybe there's some players who you don't find overly threatening in regular tournament play, but you come to MLP and you're scared to death to play them. <laughs> I mean, no, there's, because, there's a handful because of those every, players. Every point counts. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Anna, <laughs> Anna Lee was talking, you know, we were like, oh, you know, MLP, it's so fun. And she was like, yeah, but I'm the most nervous in MLP yeah. than I am playing any tournament. And it's because, like you said, every point counts. You're playing for a team, not just yourself. You know, you've got three other players that, you know, it's counting on you team owners who have drafted yep. you. It's just a whole different pressure the, level. The, the pressure, the atmosphere, yeah. the the team environment. Heck, the prize pools, the money. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, let's just say MLP is the most pressure pick of all. <laughs> that there is. So getting set here for our second mixed doubles matchup. Yeah, I, I want to see Brandon play the left here in mixed doubles. I think that'll be interesting to see. Um, seems like Jill and Brandon have good chemistry already. They're joking and laughing. Oh, oh nice move. Brandon nice coach. coming over, hit Nobler in the right shoulder. I think we may be fighting for a lot of balls in the middle here between French and Braverman. <laughs> Good ball there from French. Burrows just outstretched. Yeah, I think I think they need to put a lot of balls on Jill's forehand, a lot of dinks, get Brandon to really move over there, and then try to go behind him. They haven't really tested out Brandon's movement yet. I'd like to I'd like to see it. <laughs> French, French and Braveman. Going back and uh -oh. forth, a little friendly banter saying that Braverman didn't miss the sweet spot. Oh. That was just old paddle. We got a paddle change here. Another new rule this year is all the players had to test their paddles yes. before play. Every paddle in the bag had to be tested. So, um, so they got a special little sticker stamp. Let the refs know that paddle has been tested. Tomahawk reach in there. Good <laughs> absorption. <laughs> <laughs> Good absorption there from Braveman to get Nobla running up. French said, this is a new paddle. There's no way I was going to miss that one. Yeah, Just good wide. eye from French. Burrows. <laughs> not we're not going to be able to talk to you all because apparently we're talking to Brandon we're this entire match. We just got to put the <laughs> microphone on French. I think that's got to, that's, that's the next. That's well, first MLP, we did that. <laughs> yeah. We were all mic'd up. Yeah. That was interesting. And that, that makes it, that makes it a little tougher. I would, I would be terrible being mic'd up. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Well, I think that's what they found. I mean, you can't help but say things, you know, under your breath that now everyone's hearing that probably aren't the nicest things to be saying. <laughs> I am the worst <laughs> positive talker to myself that there possibly can be. Wildly entertaining, but uh Oh, 
Oh. oh. French just, Austin Burrows, if that hit him. Just missed, I think. All squared at five. Oh, I like that from Wes. Just got a little out of control there. Standing, standing up just a yeah, little too much on that yeah. one. Didn't quite use the legs, didn't get underneath it. And similar thing there from Braverman. Just completely straight leg and trying to use all arms. Okay. French is like, mm -mm, don't bring that one. Yeah. So that was like the converse of the last one. That one was just way too high. Yeah. Right into the wheelhouse of French. Good spot there from Burrows. French getting a little too big with that backswing. He was able to do that on the high ball. You can't have that big backswing on a lower ball. Good speed up there from Nobler. French getting caught, standing up tall. Nice deep return. Yeah. Good movement by West Burrows there. That's the pressure he really needs to put on this team. Very good step in there. Oh, easy drive up, 9-7. Oh, he was there. Almost identical step yep. in. Yep. Just caught that backhand a little late. Oh, yeah. Very good <laughs> job there. Wesley Burrows with. Wanting so badly to call it out, but clean. The ATP and then the big forehand put away. And that ball just popping up a little bit. We got caught still moving. Oh. Oh. So the AZ drive going into the end change up 11-9. This point's really huge for them. They, they need some momentum going into their next to carry match. In. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Trying to find some confidence, salvage what can be salvaged from this one. Mm -hmm. But I think a completely different chemistry for Dallas Pickleball Club with this partnership of Braverman and French. Mm -hmm. They get along well, mm -hmm. they, they're smiling, they're, they're talking. However, yeah, it's just it right. just doesn't have that same that same flow that we saw from Della Rosa and Gachiva. You know, now would have been a good time to throw Brandon on the right. I yep. honestly would have liked to have seen it. I and I think I think Jill would actually prefer to play the left. I'm not sure about that. Maybe she wouldn't. Excellent control and patience there from Nobla. And that cross-court dinking rally. Oh. Oh, God. Paddle in oh the no. kitchen. Did he hit her? I think he hit her in, oh the, no. in the head. Oh, jeez. Elbow to the head. So just turning around and looking at the monitor. I'm gonna hope it was the elbow and not the paddle, I think. I don't know. Yeah, it, it was, was the elbow. It was the elbow in the head. Okay. Yikes. And take a little little time out right here as Braverman tries to regain her composure. Tough, tough situation there with, with a ball that high popping up. As kind of 
what we talked about before. You got two players that really want to take that ball. Braverman still a little sh sh shooken up, shaken up, shitooken up. I can't even speak anymore. I just came back from Australia, and I don't even know how I talk anymore. You didn't get hit in the head, did you? Uh, I've, I, I, I've had brain damage since I was very, very young. <laughs> dropped, on, dropped on my head way too many times as oh a child. Oh, my goodness. Referee Ron Pond is going to come over and have a little chat with us. Okay, so Ron Pond just coming over and confirming that it was the elbow to the head. Braverman's going to take medical time out here. I mean, I'd probably try to hit a couple of balls and. Yeah, you see that like almost happen a lot, but I don't know that you actually see it happen. Like where actually somebody actually gets like hit yeah. going for middle balls. Especially as I'm trying to. <laughs> she looks like she's laughing. I'm, try I'm trying to figure out well, it must have been when when she hit and she ducked. Because Jill's not a short lady. No, not at all. Oh, now we see it now. You've got your you've got your change. Braverman now. I'm here for it too. Going on the left side, French going on to the right. I wanted to see this. I swear they're listening. <laughs> All right, AZ drive up 12-10. Going to resume here with Burroughs serving. Mm, I'm going to question that all day long right there <laughs> for Heather Nobler. I think she's got to stay in front, yes, not yes. go into that cross court there, especially with how dangerous French is with that reach-in wrist flick. Yeah. 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 Especially, you know, like we said, Jill hasn't been put in this position in like a year, you know. So let's make let's make her hit a lot of balls. Um, and just yeah, keep the ball away from French over there. Nice hands. Oh, almost got it back. Good pressure there from Barros. Yeah, I think West needs to have a talk with uh, with Heather and say, you know, let's keep that ball in front of you. Let's, let's put a lot of pressure on Jill right now. Oh, oh what a ball. yeah. What a ball. By all means, go cross court in that situation, yeah. especially when French is coming in, trying to be aggressive in the middle there. Good top spin roll yeah. from Heather Noble. I think he left just a smidgen <laughs> early. Oh, my gosh. That's just. Yeah. It's, I always find it hard, too, when you're playing somebody who just got injured. Like, when they come back on the court, you, like, feel, you feel bad. You feel bad by hitting, yeah, to, by hitting to, the ball to them. In reality, you have to, but 
Yeah, it's it, it's, it's kind of weird. It's a very difficult mental situation within that one. Definitely hit an out ball in the middle of that one. Yeah. And then honestly, I'm surprised Wes then continued to speed up with Brandon. Yeah, take a timeout yeah, here regroup. from AZ Drive. Still up 15 13. Yeah, that was a good timeout. But definitely needed with the side change for French and Braverman that you've wanted to see. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see. You know, Brandon take take over the middle with that backhand. Which you see how dangerous it is. I mean, Heather's used to going cross court and mix. She she has a tendency of going cross court, and he's just been danger zone on yeah. on the forehand and the backhand over there. And that it's that really changed the dynamic. Kind of tomahawk reverse backhand flick as well. It it takes away that. That left foot, even which is a really, which is a really good ball going in that forehand cross court. Just trying to listen here. Sarah Ansbury continuing to talk with Burrows and Nobler. Are they switching sides? Oh, look at this. <laughs> This is a rarity, something you don't see very so often. So a, a double reverse mixed doubles here. <laughs> I like it. We'll counter you. Let's see how it goes. Oh, Jill, <laughs> goodness. That ball. <laughs> no just, more injuries, Jill. She's just lying, lying. It was a graceful <laughs> yeah. tuck and roll there from Braverman. But good reach in there from Burrows. Ball just died once it got past French. Oh, oh. oh I almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I'm good. Commentator down. I'm good. Thought it was coming <laughs> over the fence. Yeah, oh. good backhand roll there from Nobler, pulling Braverman out wide. She wasn't able to bring that one back around for the ATP. Yeah, ran into the fence. So, 17-14. That was a really nice drop, and then West got in tight and put a lot of pressure on Jill. Yeah, Brand good Brand talk, good talk. <laughs> Jill, Jill was very smart in that one, got out of the way. That one, she took one step to the middle and said, no, I'm not going to fight for this ball again. Yeah, good balls there from Burrows. Making his presence known in the middle of the court. AZ back up four. Yeah, very good move there from Burrows. So it brings up game point for the AZ drive. Frozen at 20. Oh. oh. I like the aggression, though. I like it. Especially on their match point there. Kind of. The get from French 
off of the Burrows speed. I mean, that was a fantastic reach in speed up from Burrows, yep. but that yep. flick from French, unbelievable. Nice, nice spot. Brandon was definitely hugging the middle on that one. Go behind him with Smart. See if they can get it done here. 2017. Jill still holding her head. Uh, oh, double freeze. Here we are. All frozen, both sides. Side out scoring from here on out. Yeah. Wow, that drive just. Had a lot of shape on that drive there. Kind of got over the net and just died. It just died, it really did. Oh, just Good out. Go leave. Like the move, but French was, wasn't was able to get enough roll on that one. Oh, that tough spot there. Very difficult ball to try to make down the line. Yeah. That was a great shot. Good roll there from Nobla. Braverman getting caught on the move. Yeah, that's kind of what we talked about in the women's doubles. Oh, Braverman giving one back. Still locked 19. Oh, nice. Pick up. So they gave me this one this morning, and then they and then no, and then they said, "Oh, you need all access." Did they do all access or not? Yeah. Thank you. I just have this. Dawn, can you get two? One for <laughs> I know you forget you got a microphone on your head, and then you talk to somebody that's asking you a question. <laughs> if anybody's wondering, I do not have all access. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that ball's just wide from Burrows. So where are we at now? We are. We're at 21-20 for Dallas Pickleball Club. <gasps> and Braverman sneaks it down the line. The paddle drop walk off. Wow, what a comeback. Wow. So big adjustment there for Dallas Pickleball Club. Able to squeak out four points. AZ Drive, we thought they were in control here of the fourth and final mixed doubles match. That's the power of the freeze, though. It's the power it of the is. freeze. It is. You get on that run, and then you're halted. Yep. It's hard to close out. And then you start to feel the pressure of the other team sneaking back in, and you, yeah, Pres well, pressure, pressure. Major League Pickleball, <laughs> nothing else like it. No. We are going to take a break here, and we'll be back with our, I'm just going to pull up our schedule. We've got Brooklyn and Texas here on Grandstand Court in about, 18 minutes or so. So we'll be right back for our second match of the day here on Grandstand at Pictona and Holly Hill for MLP Daytona Beach. <laughs> 